Yeah, I'm uh, Sheriff Wayne Ivey out of Brevard County, Florida. And you've been able to reduce crime pretty significantly while you've been in office. Can you talk about your strategy? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, our strategy was to engage our community. They're the biggest stakeholders in lowering the crime rate. So by partnering with our citizens, by being aggressive on um, our law enforcement approach, we've lowered our crime rate by 51% in the past nine years. And that's, that's just a, a true uh, example of what happens when the community and law enforcement work together on the mission of putting bad people in jail and keeping the community safe. And what would you think, what do you think of the idea of this assault ban, you know, assault weapon ban that people want to bring up? What, like, in your opinion, what is the, the effect on crime? So, uh, th there is no effect. Uh, you know, if you go back and look at any of the gun measures they've put in place, not a single one of them would have stopped any of the active shooters that have taken place. Not a single one. Um, they're knee-jerk reactions. And, and what people forget is when you react to something, you're not responding to it. And so, what we need to do is respond to these threats on our school campuses. We need to make sure that we have people on those campuses that can meet violence with violence. And quite frankly, if you don't meet violence with violence, you'll be violently killed. That's the answer to this. So we need to take advantage of former military, former law enforcement, people that are already on our campuses that are out there just with passion to protect these children. And that puts a stop to it. The moment they, the, these active shooters, no matter how much they have a mental health disorder, they have enough common sense to know if you go on that campus, you're facing a threat. Right now, they are going on campuses that they know do not have a threat against them and are taking advantage of that. So we need to make sure that all of our campuses are well protected. Um, I always say it takes a community to protect a community. There's no place that it's more important than using that theory than on our campuses. You know, when you, when you look at what criminals look for, they look for soft targets. We've, we've made our schools, as, to the extent we can, hard targets. We're still working with our school board and, and uh, you know, our, our school superintendent to harden them even more, but uh, creating single access points, uh, making sure that we have an armed deputy on each campus, making sure that if one of our deputies has to go to court or anything else, we have someone that's backfilling that, making sure that that school's always a hard target with technology being our great friend, making sure we've got surveillance uh, abilities, all of those things. It's, it's not one thing that protects the children. It's the totality of all those things together that make our campuses a hard target. And we're going to continue to harden those targets. The same thing goes for our citizens. Uh, if you're a soft target, you are putting yourself at risk of being the victim of violent crime. If you look at someone that is aware of their surroundings, someone that has the immediate ability to protect themselves, the criminals are going to go somewhere else. Um, you know, a lot of people right now are talking about constitutional carry. I fully support constitutional carry. Um, I love the aspect of our citizens being able to protect themselves. Look, when the incident happens, law enforcement's coming. We're mocked to with our hair on fire trying to get there. But you're going to have to defend yourself, your family, those around you in the church, those around you in the movie theater until we arrive. And so, given our citizens the, the ability to protect themselves, literally means giving them the ability to protect themselves, not having to hide. This is America. We, we, we don't hide from anything. We stand shoulder to shoulder and fight our enemies. So we, we need to make sure we're doing everything we can to let our citizens be the first line of defense. And with constitutional carry, there's obviously a responsibility for training, right? You, Absolutely. We, we are one of the very few sheriff's offices across the country that puts on training for their citizens. We actually have a course called Self-Defense Through Tactical Shooting and Decision Making. It's a four-part course where we're teaching uh, them, first of all, how to avoid that threat, how to, how to be aware of your surroundings, how to have those things, uh, you know, to keep you from ever having to face a violent incident. Second thing, we talk about the legalities. We talk about stand your ground, castle doctrine, self-defense, the laws that surround those measures. We put them on uh, shoot, don't shoot simulators so they can see how quickly things unfold and how they need to respond. You notice I don't use the word react, respond to that threat. And then we have them shoot over 100 rounds through their firearm with one of our tactical firearms instructors. I want our citizens to be the best prepared they can to stop a violent threat. And how long have you been putting that course on for? Man, we started putting that course on in 2014. To this day, it is still a sold out class. Um, we always fill it to capacity. And uh, we've actually created a second course. It's called Self-Defense Through Tactical Shooting and Decision Making on Steroids. And it's a, it's a part two of that class. And obviously a great reception so far. Oh, it's, uh, we have people from other counties that come there to take our course. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? 
Uh, no, I mean, I, I just appreciate what you guys are doing to get the message out there. Look, the Second Amendment is the military of our Constitution. It gives our citizens the ability to protect themselves against all threats, all threats of any kind.